Hey, 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 it's Al with Ballista coming at you here. Uh, today, it's Monday morning. We're ready to talk about startup stories. Today, I want to take a few minutes to actually talk about the 80-20 rule, the Pareto principle, and how it applies to startups. Startups are very unique in that most often, it's one or two individuals that are literally doing all of the work for the business. That can be a very big challenge when you don't understand exactly what it is that's going to make you money where the profit is going to come from, right? So understanding the 80-20 principle and how it applies not just to your business, but to business in general is really key to making sure that your startup takes off. So first of all, the 80-20 principle is not as much a principle uh, as far as the 80-20 split as it's really been led to believe. So the Proto principle basically says that the majority, the 80%, is going to yield a minority, the 20%. So the 80-20 became the standard used when discussing the Proto principle, but it's not really the, uh, it's, it's not a clear differentiated breakdown. In some cases it's 90-10, uh, could be 70-30, really just depends on your circumstances. But understand that the majority of the work that you do is going to produce a minority of your results and the inverse is also true. The, the small amount of what you do, 20% of what your actions are, are going to produce 80% of your results. 20% of your customers are going to be 80% of your profit. As an example, I had a conversation uh, with uh, uh, the CEO of a technology company here a few weeks ago, and we were discussing what the business model looks like. Now, their bread and butter is uh, website creation. Uh, and they have standard templates that they use, like a lot of website developers do. Uh, and a lot of their business is small business, uh, typically you know, very small price tag on it. But they do a lot of it, and it's easy for them to do. However, the majority of their profit is actually driven off of customized sales. Those customized sales also have bigger profits. So understanding which market it is that you're focusing on that's going to produce the greater margin and going to drive the results that you're looking for is really important when creating what your overall sales plan is going to be. Your business has a lot of different tasks and I spoke a little bit about core competencies a few weeks ago uh, on our strategy boost on Friday morning uh, but I really want to bring that up again because the core competencies of your business are going to be different at different times, potentially, depending on how your business transitions. But as a startup, you know what it is that you're driving. You're either driving a product or you're driving a set of services. And those services, those products, that really needs to be where your focus is. Making sure that you can convert whatever it is that you're doing into sales because that's where the profit's going to come from. That's where the foundation is going to be laid for you to be able to move your company forward. So there are a lot of activities that you're going to be doing as a, as a startup, as an entrepreneur, that really don't feed into the sales process. So you have to understand and really question, is this action going to achieve the desired result? The desired result obviously being profits and moving the company forward. So no matter what it is that you're doing, you really need to sit back and ask that question. Yes, things like payroll are important. Things like paying your taxes are important. But they're not driving the business forward. So understanding how your actions play into the grand scheme is really important. I'll give you an example, uh, another example rather. Uh, when you look at a company like Microsoft or even Apple, Steve Jobs at Apple and uh, Bill Gates over at Microsoft understood what their strengths were and what they needed to do to drive the business forward. Bill Gates understood that his strength and where he needed to focus was on programming. So he brought a team along that could focus on everything else. So he programmed and they drove the business because his programming was what was going to drive the profit. Steve Jobs over at Apple understood that innovation was what was going to drive Apple to the future. So he focused on innovation and brought a team around him that could help support that so he could spend the majority of his time 
on the little bit of his business that was going to drive the profits long term. So understand what those are because only 20%, about 20% of what your daily tasks are, are going to drive the majority of your business. So figure out what those are, focus on them, and we'll see you at success. Now, as always, subscribe below so that you know when our videos have come up. Uh, we do shoot videos Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays for you, uh, just so that you guys have a steady flow of information to help you grow your business. That's really what this is about. Feel free to find us over on Facebook or LinkedIn. We'd love to have conversations with you guys there as well. And as always, please leave comments below. Uh, we'd love to talk about it, see what your thoughts are. We'll talk to you soon.